Hello? Hello! Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon. How are we all doing? Hi Cookie, AOT, good to see you. It's been a bit, Peaches, how are you doing? Yeah, how's everyone dealing with everything? Well, we are staying safe here. Things are great. We just did our last kind of bulk up of groceries yesterday and we should be good to go for a couple weeks now, hopefully without going to the store, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. But other than that, it's good. Did a lot of house cleaning. So kind of sanitized a lot of stuff since we're gonna be home for a bit now. Feels good. Yeah, like we got six chickens. They were on sale for 45 bucks. That's a great deal. Yeah, lots of and lots of chimkin coming up. How is everyone else's week? I have to say like the first day being home off of work and like being laid off, it was kind of weird. Second day, I kind of like kept myself busy. Like I said, I did a lot of cleaning and stuff of the house. And now today I'm kind of like settling into a new routine. So that's also what I did is kind of made a new schedule for myself so that I do stay productive and am able to work on some new things while we have a little bit of extra time. I mean, I think it's really important that we do take advantage of this time while hopefully some of us are still getting money, whether it's from the government or your job, and we can work on things that we really enjoy doing. Not always work, work, work for other people. It's been weird working from home every day. I bet that would be weird. If you still are able to work, but you have to be at home, that would feel weird. Your state just got towel. What is that? Or did you misspell that? Cause I don't even know what that means. I noticed that the states is still not have it under control. Oh, got put down on, put on lockdown. Oh my gosh. Hi, eye shot. I mean, we have to do that though, guys is, I mean, we shouldn't have to come to these measures, really. I mean, Sam and I said before this is it'll be sad if we come to the point where no one's allowed outside. Like, let's not get to that point where everyone has to be on lockdown. You think you like it, Cookie? You've been creating task lists so you're productive and don't force yourself to be behind the computer screen doing work all day. Yeah. That's exactly it is Sam was asking me if I needed him to make some lists for me. And I was like, nope, I'll be good. I just need to set my different days of what I'm doing and the specific hours. Like when I stream, I'm putting that in as work. Since I don't have a job to go to, I'm going to take this more seriously right now. So that's my job. We're streaming. It's good. I'm excited though. So new schedule guys. I don't know if you saw the post on discord is I've added Thursdays to our stream schedule. So starting next week, obviously is Thursday will be an extra day for Kate face. And every day we are going to be streaming starting at 11 AM Pacific time. Hi, white dove. How are you? Good to see you. Sunday is your day this week. I don't know if you saw, I did tag you in Discord though. So Sunday is gonna be Greek day. And White Dove has requested with their channel points that we make Spanakopita. So excited. <laughs> Very excited. I was excited that I found frozen spinach. I only had to go to two stores. And I also got goat feta and we had luck finding Philo as well. So it's gonna be perfect. Okay guys, chicken and dumpling soup. So I do have a recipe linked here, but it's not the one that I'm gonna be following because the one that I'm following is typed up and it's posted in Discord on a PDF. But I did find one online from Taste of Home called Grandma's Chicken and Dumpling Soup and it looked pretty similar to what 
I'm gonna be making today. So I just thought I would offer you guys a reference if you don't have Discord. Oh yeah, oh my goodness, going grocery shopping here. These are the times you go shopping, guys. 30 minutes after they open or 30 minutes before they close. That's it. Okay, so this recipe that I am making today, chicken and dumpling soup, is something that I haven't been making for a long time. I've only been making it for a couple of years now. And it was shared to Sam and I from someone that we used to work with. So when we moved out to Vancouver, oh, what, four years ago, is we helped open a brew pub. And well, the head brew master there is obviously with us being in the kitchen, he was in the brewery, is we'd always kind of like share foods, whether he would like bring in snacks and then we make him something special in the kitchen. That's kind of what we had going on is our brewmaster, Jody, shout out. He's amazing. He doesn't live near us anymore, but we're hoping to visit him one day in the Okanagan. So he brought in this chicken and dumpling soup one day. So the day before he's like, hey guys, I want to, I made something this weekend and I want to bring it into you to hear what you think about it. So we're like, oh, okay, like Sam and I love getting treats all the time. And so he brings in this chicken and dumpling soup. If anyone's had chicken and dumpling soup, it does not look very appealing. I will say that it's like, oh, little pieces of like stuff that looks bland, <laughs> delicious. <laughs> but we tried it and it's so good. And so he typed it all up and sent it to me. So the one that is typed up in Discord, that is Jody's writing to a T, is I just took his wording, didn't change it at all, because it's really cute the way he talks. And so that recipe has been in his family for over 90 years now. So that's pretty special. And it is delicious. I will say that this is probably the fourth or fifth time of us making this. Hi, Annie, how are you? Yes, yes, exactly, Sammy. Thank you, Omdog. So the chicken stock that we made last week, remember our chicken bone broth? So Sam poached a whole chicken in that. That's what's in this pot back here on this stove. So we are going to just heat it up so that the broth goes back to liquid because I'm pretty sure it's jelly right now. We're gonna get that chicken out of there. Then we can peel all the meat off of the chicken and then we just have to prep some vegetables and obviously the dumplings for the soup. And the dumplings, we're gonna put a little bit more love into them and we're going to mill our own spelt today. So that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna start milling. Break out the grain mill. Shout out to Scat434. If Scat pops in today, he's the one that gave us the grain mill or donated for us to get the grain mill. White Dove, you haven't had chicken dumpling soup since you were a kiddo. These are, are the times, I think, when people are going to start migrating towards their like childhood favorite foods because we're, people are looking for comfort right now. And this is definitely a recipe to add into your repertoire, for sure. And it's really not hard. Hi Pete, how are you doing, man? Hope you are doing well, staying safe. Oh, Annie, yeah, go shopping sooner than later. We be milling. Yeah, no grilling, just milling today. All right, let's set it up. This is the attachment that we've used the least on the incarcerum. What's everyone else up to today? I am gonna get my new kind of schedule or routine written out. 
after stream and Sam and I have been adding walks into our day. We think we're gonna do two walks a day, one in the morning if we can, and then one after dinner since the gym is closed so that we don't gain a ton of weight while we're stuck at home. I think that's it, other than streaming. It's not very nice out, so I'm not gonna do any gardening. The new pot, oh, thanks Annie. I know it looks so beautiful, love that. There's still no toilet paper. Yeah, looking like it's gonna be butts in the air in the shower. <laughs> no, I don't know, we haven't checked. Yeah, before the craze hits. <laughs> You'll be telling your grandkids about the toilet paper shortage in 2020. Back in my day, in the year 2020. <laughs> okay, give this a little dust off the old grain mill, if you will. These are probably times when a lot of stuff is gonna get dusted off and used once again. She's been dusted. So this is what it looks like. This is the grain mill attachment from Incarcerum. So we put our grains down there and then it comes out of the bottom there. And then if we look at it, there, so that's how we adjust the coarseness of the mill. And obviously for this, we're gonna go, well, not very coarse. We want it pretty fine for our dumplings. Yeah, we gotta go super coarse first. Yes, yes, yes. We'll have to pass it through probably three times, I'm gonna say. So you start coarse and then go finer as you work through. We found if we went too fine at first is, it just worked the mill too much and it is plastic, so I don't wanna crack it. it we bunged it up, yeah. That's exactly what happened. Cookie, you saw toilet paper on Amazon Fresh last night for the first time since the panics. Amazon Fresh, cool. Annie's grain mill is in storage and disassemble. It requires two people to move. What? Is it like a clay mill? Is it like old school version? Sammy, in the last few days that we are off, Sammy's done some bacon recently. Like he sold a, a score cake a chocolate score cake to Zach's family. Um, let's see how this is gonna go on. I think it's this way. Sammy's late night baking. There we go. I was like, something's not sitting right. You built the mill yourself? It uses a half horsepower motor, explosion proof? This is legit, Annie. <laughs> you, yeah, White Dove doesn't have a meal, feeling deprived. I do like the little like tabletop ones. I don't know if you guys have ever watched Bohemian Breads, but she has a nice little tabletop mill that works super well. And they're not really expensive either. They're really not. Let's see how we're gonna get this view. in the mill. Oh, 
didn't like it that way. It's probably that. There we go. And then, so we want it more coarse. Two, three. I actually don't know how, so there's little numbers coming up here. Oh, it says stop. Okay, so we'll go up to, Three and C. I always track it at like almost the highest. The highest is four. Yeah, so start at four. Okay, so we're gonna start cracking our spelt grains. So I have a local spelt grain from Nuka Rose Milling. It's just out in Machosen here. Is it's like farmland out there, and there is a mill there. So you can buy your stuff unmilled or milled and they also have like a really nice freezer full of local lamb from the farm around there. Really nice spot. I'm hoping that one day we'll be able to do a tour there and maybe, I don't know, do something. Not anytime soon though, sad to say. <laughs> oh, that's true, Annie. Yeah, that's right. So you had to get your mill for your brewery set up. Oh yeah, cracking all those greens. I think I'll just do it all, guys. Yeah, just do it all. There's not that much left. And I feel like we should use it up. I will keep the bag though. So we can always refill the bag. It's my little bag. Spelt green. I really love spelt. It has such like a nice nutty flavor. And it's supposed to be really easily digested with your body. So I always like to mix it in with my white flour. So we're, we can't do like full spelt because it's almost too chewy. Like it has a really nice chew in the grain. So I always cut it with white flour. Okay, now we just need a little bowl underneath of there. And then while that's milling, I will get our chicken broth heating up. Okay, let's see. The moment of truth, friends. So, mixer's on low speed. Yep, it's working. chicken pot on. Oh, such a nice layer of fat. Might actually scrape that off for to use in our dumplings. Chicken fat in the dumplings? Okay. This is rewarding, yeah. This is really nice. I really like the little cracking sound, I have to say. It's kind of comforting. Claire? Claire? Hi, Claire. How are you? How are you and Vincent doing? I have to say though guys, it has been really nice being able to like watch other streamers. Cause typically I don't spend a lot of time on Twitch other than 
doing my own stream when I'm working full time. So it is nice to be able to support other streamers. We just got such a good amount of chicken fat off of this. Schmaltz dumplings? Schmaltz and spilt? That's like a very grandma thing. I was almost going to put a babushka on today for you guys, but then I decided not to. Okay, there's a little bit left in there. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Relic as well. How are you? It's crazy times at work. Aw, oh, thanks, Claire. Yeah, this one, the one on the right is my grandma's, and then the one on the left was a birthday gift from my mom. Thanks for the shout out, Annie. Oh my gosh, Relic, you guys produce medical supplies? 12 hour days rough. Yeah, thank you for what you are doing. Can we just take a moment and say that? Is thank you so much and anyone else that is on the front lines. That includes like people in grocery stores, everything like that. Thank you guys. Okay, so now, I don't really wanna move my mill out of the way, see if we can get a, so that's how it is after the first pass through. So we just kind of cracked the spelt berry. Now we'll go back in and now we'll go down to three. I cannot stress enough guys, you can't rush through this process. No rush. Thanks Claire. So next, nice, that's working great. It's a little less quiet now, so the mill's not working as hard to break down the grain. All right, so got a little veggie platter here for our <laughs> soup. You can rush through it <laughs> when you have hardened steel rollers. Oh man, scat! Hey, We're hey, milling! Hey. Thanks, Scat. We're chilling and milling. How are you? Okay, so veggies going into our soup. I have cabbage. Cabbage is pretty ready, readily available everywhere still. So we bought a bunch of those because they do last for like two weeks plus in the fridge. Carrot. We got our trusty onion and then some corn, parsley, dill, and garlic and well you can add in whatever vegetables depending on what's available to you i know last time i made this i put green beans in as well maybe peas would be good some green things oh no yeah more ripe bananas because we're not really drinking smoothies as much anymore we cut back on that hi viewn how are you what is up, chat? Fresh food. Yep, scat, we're milling fresh spelt that's grown locally here. Thank you so much, Relic, for the 100 yeah. biddies. 100 biddies from Relic. That's going towards a new meat slicer. Thank you, thank you. Salmon! What, what are in the dumplings? So this is, I believe it's an American dish where the dumplings are not filled. So it's not an Asian style dumpling. It is a loose formed dumpling that is a mixture of like flour, 
Uh, we use the broth from the soup, so flour, broth, shortening, and I believe a little bit of baking powder. And then, so you mix that up, and then I like to just use a little ice cream scoop to scoop it into the soup pot. No, that's enough. Things that annoy Kate, that. Meat slicer fund, yep, that's like one of the last things we need in our kitchen. And that will be used to make pastrami and slice bacon for people and share the meats. Wow, scat, thank you so much. The thousand biddies. What? Oh, also, there's still stuff in there. Sammy, can you come here for a second? Sammy, what is, what is the incentive for the meat slicer? I don't know. What's the incentive for the meat slicer? Oh, I thought you smelled shrimpy. I thought he was eating cereal. I was like, why do you smell like fish right now? Okay, so incentive for the meat slicer. If you guys complete it, Sam has said that oh. we can either shave off the beard or dye it. Um, I don't know what I clicked just now. Okay, yeah, choices. I know, really tough. Okay, I need to switch this green again. I mean, the way that he thought of it was that we are gonna have to like trim it up for the wedding anyways. But now <laughs> it's probably not happening. He just said F it. <laughs> Anyone who says shave it gets timed out. <laughs> Should we dye it green? You can dye it any color. You shaved off your beard because of stupid Corona? What? You had to, Scat? Okay, Annie, be safe at the grocery store. Good luck. Glad you got your hand sanitizer. We will see you hopefully when you come back. Okay, turning the mill down. Oh, what? Scat, another thousand? Thank you so much. I guess you, yeah, I guess you guys really want Sammy's beard gone. Okay, I'm turning this down to two now. Pretty fine. Give it one more pass through. And cookie with a thousand. Holy shit, you guys. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm gonna turn this back on. Keep it going again. And so then the other thing is that, well, the meat slicer that we want is actually pretty expensive. It's about double what I'm asking for, but Zach said that he's also gonna chip into it with us so that we can get a really good meat slicer for the price point and we can all kind of share it. So hell yeah. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, Claire, every nurse and doctor at work have baby faces now. Terry asks you, he needs to make a stripe in the middle like blonde, like a racing car, <laughs> like a skunk. <laughs> People can be awesome, and I mean, in my case, Relic, is they usually are. Yeah, they usually are. I see that we're at a level two hype train. Thank you, conductors. Here they are. As the chicken man, we have Anisopteryx. Cookie, were you the conductor conductor? Or did you want someone else? And then... B. Sultan is our space conductor. Yeah, there's a little hype train. We built that last week. Well, you can change your guy at any time. 
like I keep saying, we still have all the Simpsons characters to pick from as well. We got Choo Choo. Choo Choo. So this works a lot slower when it's at a finer setting, right? But it is almost perfect. I think maybe one more pass after this one. It'll be really nice. Just a bit too coarse still. The train is awesome. I'm thinking I might have to dig out the, the Fiat set and we might have to build that together on stream or we can start building Hogwarts castle. We got time. There's a lot of time for Lego. The former conductor badge is cool too. What, you can have one from before. Yash, the little feet. Yeah, Sammy's a show off, he loves it. Oh, because of the emotes, Claire. <laughs> You're a show off. Don't go on the tracks, guys. Be careful. <laughs> the Hogwarts castle is massive. If I'm being honest, Scat, I am not even gonna attempt to build it if, until I have like a place I know where I can put it. What are we grinding? Hi, Suzanne Likes Cake, how are you? We are milling up some fresh spelt berries. And then we're going to use our spelt flour in our dumplings for our chicken and dumpling soup. Yeah, Vune is way too fast. <laughs> how about you do it in part? I'm gonna see if I can take a video for the place where we got the grain from. Cause they said they'll repost whatever I post on Instagram. Thanks guys for the train. Really appreciate it. We're almost halfway through our meat slicer goal. That's amazing. And we got a new emote. Choo choo. Scott, you have the ship in a bottle and it's frustrating. You think they made it fragile on purpose? Oh man. Oh, a relic. Yeah, that was the barbecue stream for my birthday and it was freaking so good. We like barbecues. Okay, after this I'll check our our chicken, see how that broth is doing. Scat's the new conductor? Oh, <gasps> Scat! Okay, Scat. Who do you want as your minifigure? Mm -hmm. 
And Cookie, okay, you have the blue, it's blue, the former conductor. That's awesome. Now you guys will fight for the badges. Okay, let's see if I can get a vid. Just for some reason, the lighting is better back here. Just keep milling, 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 milling. We are almost there. Yeah, we are at one. Bon Appetit Kitchen is now doing all cooking from their homes for the YouTube channel. Are they like doing it live? There are, I have to say, there are so many like chefs and creators on social media that have been either like on Instagram live or YouTube live or even like Facebook live where they've been sharing all their stuff. It's pretty cool to see. What did you do? <laughs> oh, okay, we're liquid. Shut it off. Cool it down. We'll strain the liquid into the pot when we get our next uh, spelt passing through. Then we'll take apart our chicken. Cut up some vegetables, and we're making some soup, guys. This is such a good one to meal prep too. Another one of those dishes that really does get better as it sits. It ages well, let's say. Watching a mill work is almost like trying to watch water boil. <laughs> Me peeking in. <laughs> I'm peeking. Are we there yet? Okay, I will get a nice fine mesh strainer. saving all my veggie scraps and freeze them till you make enough stock. That's a brilliant idea right now, Armored. Like everything. That's brilliant. It's a great time for people to learn how to make stock. I usually don't have very many veggie scraps because I give them to my dog. But I always save the bones. Okay, so this is done. Mune, how do I have such good skin? How many lambs do I sacrifice per month? And which deity do I pray to to get skin that nice? <laughs> I honestly don't know. Just moisturizer. I wear sunscreen every single day. That's really it. I use oil of Olay, SPF 30. It puts the lotion on the skin. <laughs> yeah, I always thought I had like oily skin, but really I had, my skin was always too dry. Figured it, figured it out guys. More moisture, nicer skin. 
You tried doing that moisturizer and stuff. After decades of abuse, your face got irritated to get so much care and it erupted. Ah, that's what happened to Sam too. Like Sam's skin is usually like, it is perfect. And the one time that I was like, it was summertime, I was like, Sam, we should probably put some moisturizer on. And then he breaks out. Yeah. So maybe some people can't have it. Okay, I just turned it to the finest setting and we'll do one more pass, guys. Yeah, you went crying to your wife and she just laughed. I think the reference did go over everyone's head and that's fine. Elrad, thank you so much for the five months, my dude. Hope you are doing well and staying safe at home. Hi, Dust. Yeah, early stream hype. We're starting early all days now because we can. Yeah, there's no more of this on Fridays. It's like, will Kate be on at four or will she be on at five? Maybe she'll be on at six. No, we'll just be on at 11. Pacific time all days. It puts the lotion on the skin. All right. I think I can give you guys double view. Oh, I know that view. I feel like our meeting would be the way that Sam and I met LA, the hunger service. That's what happened at TwitchCon. It was legit, such a nice hug. Hi Speed, how are you? You taking care, my dude? Okay, stove and cutting board. All right, we got our big old cast iron pot here. It's like 7.6 liters, I believe. So we're straining our broth in and taking our chicken out that we poached. And then we will pick all of the meat off the chicken. We are grinding up some spelt. So we started with whole grains and this is our third pass through. So we're making some spelt flour. Yeah, exactly. You, you do realize that it has to be a hug six feet away. <laughs> Look at the color of this bone broth. This is what we created. Chimkin. Yeah, that looks just great. That's heaven. And we have this little guy. Boop. So he's still steaming a bit. So I'll let him cool off just a bit more. And then we'll take all this skin off. Cause I think that's just, it's too soggy and mushy to go into there. Speed, we made a chicken bone broth. We did this last weekend on stream. And then we poached a whole chicken in it during this week. Let it sit in there because it was sealed with fat on top. Now we're making a Zupa. With this, we are making our own flour. And so we did, yeah, 24 hours on the chicken bone broth. 
It was from the Nom Nom Paleo cookbook. And yeah, never boiled. No boiling. How long did the chicken go? Overnight. Okay, what is your thing with you? You got a route figured out. Florida, Cali, Washington, then us, and then New York. That makes sense. I feel like maybe you should do Florida and New York at the same time so that you're all on one side. But really, it's up to you. Do I use the slow cooker? Nope. I just cooked it really, really low on the stove top for the chicken in the broth. This is going so well. Let's see if I can go a bit faster. Flights back to Europe are cheaper from New York. That does make sense. <laughs> Titan. <laughs> You're packed. You're headed to Vancouver in the I, Vancouver Island in the morning. All right, dude. I guess we'll make the bed up then. Wait, what's Sam doing on Tuesday? Oh, cleaning up his egg. We almost there, friends. How are you, Titan? You've moved the large knot eight times? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The egg goes everywhere. I'm doing really good, Titan. Settling in to my new routine quite nicely. Spelled? <laughs> Mune. Why are you not a professional meme maker? All right, guys, this is our time. All of the things that you wanna do, you should be doing them. So if we didn't have to go back to our other job that we were working, what job would you like to go back to if you had the chance? Sounds good, Speed. You take care. And maybe we'll see you later. Yeah, send photos. There's no money in it, Vune. People pay you in chuckles. Yeah, mostly scoffs. Picked up two bottles of Crown. Sitting on nine bottles. Yeah, you're good for a bit, Titan. Yeah, we can't feed ourselves from scoffs. What? Yeah, there's a birdie. Can you guys hear it? Beep. There must be a little piece of grain just stuck somewhere. I think I would like to try hairdressing. That's always been one I was interested in. Yeah, Crown Royal, CR. The hen, oh, Cornish hen, so good. That looks amazing. Parmesan, garlic parm crushed potatoes. Yum. Are we there yet? OK. 
get a couple of bowls out, one for our chicken, one for our veggies. And we wait. You failed, how come? It's just a baby chicken. I remember we had those on our brewery menu, whole Cornish hens. And no one would ever buy it because no one in Vancouver wants to eat with their hands because they're all like business people. They're like, how dare I eat with my hands? Then Sam, would, Sam and I would always be the ones like eating up the Cornish hens so they didn't go bad. So good. Yeah, are you sure it's Chimkin? Quite sure it's Chimkin. Oh no, Vune. It was Soylent Green. Not again. Baby chicken does not cook like real chicken. Leather hen is what you cooked. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Scat. You know what? The meat was a little bit more delicate than chicken. The Cornish hen's a bit more delicate. So then it can dry out really quick, right? The protein police. That's Titan. Okay, I don't see any more, any more grains in the bottom there, so we're almost done. So what did this take us? About 45 minutes? Yep, we're almost empty. Done. First things first, for safety, we will unplug before we start disassembling. Twist our little mill. Give it a little wiggle. <laughs> How terrific! How are you? I always like to just kind of get all residual flour out of there. Give it a tappy tap. kind of does get all over the mixer. Give that a little wipe too. Dun. The Wi-Fi at work is bad today because there's just so many people using it probably. Okay, so that looks a lot different than the grain that we started with, right? So really nice, finely milled. 
We could go finer if we wanted, but I like seeing like the little flakes of spelt. So that's where I'm gonna stop. So we can just put that aside for now until we're ready to mix up our dumplings. Beautiful. Hi, Matt, how are you? You guys are just in prepping mode, Hodorific? Dealing with all the daily changes, yeah, I bet. Oh, I'm gonna do it this way, I think. Oh, you're still working, Matt. How's that going? You staying safe? Okay. This is the not so pretty part. So this is the part that's good for you. There's a lot of connective tissue still on here. I think I'm going to actually save all of these scraps for, to make another broth. Cause I feel like we didn't cook this chicken for long enough in here to really get the full benefit from the bones. So we'll be saving all the bones and skin from this guy. It just makes sense. It's the real deal at work for you since this week and also dealing with daily changes. What do you do again, Claire? Filipino food is very interesting. Lumpia. Crunchy. Oh, wow. Delicious. <laughs> oh, you're an occupational therapist in a hospital. So you're busy keeping yourself safe too then. Holy Claire. Be careful out there. The crunch. That's what we like. We're all about that crunch. Okay, I don't want any weird pieces of connective tissue in here. Not in grandma's soup. Nope. But look at how like, it's just pulling apart so easily. Ah, it's also kind of slippery. <laughs> Check the bees, Titan. Did you did you get the bees, or that's this weekend? Yeah, good thing you have amazing coworkers. That always makes it so much better. Snap in this stuff. <gasps> you pick them up Sunday. Yeah, if the government doesn't shut anything down. Hey, they shouldn't be shutting down the bees. The bees are gonna save us. zone into this chicken oh it totally does cookie yeah poaching the chicken whole I mean you can see how nice it's just like falling apart like this really is not a ton of work for me at all so it's gonna add more flavor and nutrients to the broth as well as the chicken though right 
is the chicken is just gonna also soak up all that flavor that you already have in the broth. To me, it seems like a really smart thing to do for soup. It's crazy how thankful people are. Can't say that about the customers in supermarkets. I don't think so. Although I will say like here where Sam and I are is people are being so, so nice. But I mean, Canadians kind of have a stereotype for being overly nice, right? But it is good to see people taking care of each other. You have to go to work, Scat. It made you take a couple of days off. Yeah, rotisserie chickens. That's a really quick thing if you wanna make a soup at home but don't have time to cook the chicken. Get a rotisserie chicken from the store and pull it apart the same way that I'm doing right now. Are they still doing rotisserie chickens in the store though? Probably depends on where you are. Viewed, when you go shopping for groceries now, you tell the cashiers, you're so glad that they're still doing their job. Yes. Yeah, even the cashiers just hearing that, so nice to hear. Just to know that they're appreciated, right? Matt's mom went shopping super early in the morning. When she was shopping, she looked away. Some woman ran by and stole some milk? Are you freaking serious? Okay, that's where I feel like the states are really different from Canada because I cannot see that happening here. It's not like a doggy dog situation. Gotta take care of each other, not make it harder. The store said they can't do anything about it since it wasn't like purchased yet. Wow. Just wow. Yeah, told you exactly. That's what we need to do. Wild, wild west down there. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to milk. <laughs> This is going to be amazing. I can already tell. The chicken just feels so moist. Oh, the back. Okay, our little oysters. Boom. And boom. Now there's always some meat here. This is sometimes like a second chicken wing almost. Pull that off. We're using it all. Do the other side. Boom. Take the rest of the skin off. Sounds good, Scat. Thank you so much for everything today. And I'm so happy that you got to see the mill in action. Put that piece in there. 
I'll pull the chicken apart smaller after we got it all processed. Chicken doesn't look like it's cooked. It's like just cooked because we really, really low poached it. And then we'll finish because we have to reheat it again in the soup. So we'll bring it up all the way. But good eye, Matt. It is like just barely cooked. Oh, nice view, and you're still working on your little mural. You got some painting to do. Okay, that is all of the usable bits. Now, you can go smaller. Laughing at Hoju's comment. Chimkin, chimkin. So just pulling it apart into nice bite-sized pieces because, well, we eat soup with a spoon. We don't want like really huge pieces of chicken that don't fit on a spoon. A little bit of chicken in each bite. If you want, you can change it. I don't care. Yeah, I'm going to change the command. Kate, can I change the command? <laughs> It makes you feel bad to lurk. Seriously? No. Should be understanding. Like, I don't care when people go lurk. A lot of people are always lurking. Yes, hold you. I heard Chuck Norris came into contact with the virus. Now it's in isolation for 14 days. <laughs> Armor, now that you're used to a plant-based diet mostly, you have started to use MyFitnessPal. Love that one. Love that app. I use that so much when I was like getting into nutrition and fitness and stuff. Love that app. Peanuts are expensive calorie-wise. They are one of the worst. It's so disappointing. Yeah, because peanuts were like a huge staple in my diet too. Hi, Paul. How are you? I was hoping that you'd come in for the chimkin. We're almost done chimkinning and then it's time to soup. What? Thank you for the 100 biddies as well. That's very generous of you, my dude. Had lots of donos for our meat slicer already today, so thank you. Nice, love it, Vune. Guys, Vune is such a good administrator. I don't know where I'd be without him. You had some bitties for a change, holding them carefully for a select few. Well, thank you. Thanks, Paul. I appreciate it. Got Pulsh bitties. Hi, cooking girl. 
So funny, you said last night on stream you haven't made chicken and dumplings this season. Here we go. <laughs> How are you doing? This is the time for chicken and dumplings. Do you call it chicken and dumpling soup or do you just call it chicken and dumplings? Ah, sad to hear that, Hoju. Maybe I'll see you later. Otherwise, tomorrow, I'll say we'll see you. Keep doing your thing, Hoju. You're saving us. You know what Graham and Amanda call Vune? The German with the clipboard. See? You live up to it. Yeah, one cup of peanuts is 13 cups of mixed vegetables. It's insane. Peanuts are the worst calorie-wise, but they're so good. Chimkin gonna be a good time. All right, so you just call it chicken dump. Chick and dump. Soup is just implied. Oh my gosh. Very Canadian of me then. Everyone, look at this chicken and dumpling beginner over here. Of course it's soup already, Kate. <laughs> Leave Matt's peanuts alone. This was a really big chicken. Like we got a lot out of here. Probably gonna get six to eight servings of soup. Lots of good leftovers from this one, whether it's for lunch or dinner. Honey roasted salted peanuts. Yes, Matt. Got a little wipey wipe. I'm just gonna take a really quick 30 second break. And then we're gonna come back and start prepping our veggies for our soup. And then once that's going, probably half an hour until we eat. What is he doing? Oh, toffee nuts. I made some meat gummies yesterday, or Caitlin and I did. Sam and I made some edible gummies from the last bit of our friend's coconut infused oil. We had strawberry raspberry. Quite delicious, indeed. Oh. Maple bourbon sriracha mixed nuts. Pistachio binge, that's expensive. Can't afford that. 
Your grandma used to make chicken and dumplings. Had to keep knocking the dumplings off the bottom of the pot so they'd not burn. Very dense. Oh, yeah, those are heavy. When the broth cooled, it was semi-solid. That's when you know. You thought it was a Kirby? Yeah, here we go, guys. Okay, so the recipe that I'm using is posted in our Discord because it's typed up from our old brewmaster, Jody. Jody Hamill. So you'll see it as the PDF. There we go, chicken and dumpling soup two. Open it up. So this is what he says. I'll, I will read what he wrote because I typed it up exactly in his words. Verbatim. Yeah, verbatim. This is how Jody talks. He's kind of a hippie and we love him. Love him. Day one. Simmer chicken very slow and then debone and pull meat off, but keep all the big bones. Put big bones in with broth and meat and put in the fridge or cool spot. I use the garage as I usually only make it in the winter. That's what he says. So we took it a step further and we cooked the entire chicken in the broth and we let it cool down full in the broth and then we took it out and pulled it. So a little bit different, but that's what he says. Day two. Put pot back on stove, add carrots, whatever else you want in it that has texture, and simmer slowly. Take out a cup or two of broth to use later for the dumplings. Prep and make your dumplings using warm broth. Trust me, I don't know why, maybe you do. <laughs> we don't know why it's warm broth. Mix all the dry ingredients, crumble in your shortening or lard, and then mix in the broth. So he rolls them out and then cuts them. But I was saying earlier that I do it a bit different. So I like little like bite size pieces of dumpling. So I use this little scooper, like an ice cream scoop and just scoop it into the pot. And they also cook quicker when they're smaller. And I just think using the scoop is a lot less messy than dealing with rolling out dumplings and stuff. Yeah, not a good day, Polsh. Not a good one to be hungry. So the dumplings, these little ones will simmer for maybe about seven minutes and definitely not 20. Probably around 10 minutes. And it says, don't lift the lid to peak. It's bad luck. After 20 ish minutes, serve and enjoy. Sometimes dumplings just don't work out. Shit happens. Also said by Jody. The best day by far is day three when you slowly, slowly, slowly warm up the pot for leftovers. There you go. A nearly 90 year old hamo slash slash shell recipe. Love it. So that's it guys. Yeah. What if you have a glass lid? Well, then you're winning. And that's when we pull this out, Paul. This is what happens when you have a glass lid for chicken and dumpling soup. Magic happens. Okay, chicken to the side. That just has to get added to our soup when we have everything heating up. Yeah, whoa, what was that? We'll start with our onion and carrot. So this was frozen corn. And then we'll just get a couple of small pieces of cabbage in there too. Hi, Becca Bugs, how are you? Okay, so nice bite-sized pieces of all our veggies. So a nice small dice is what we'll go with today.
Maybe there is no spoon. <laughs> We are not gonna peel our carrot. Okay, so our onion, we will follow the curve of the onion as well as the little lines. See them closer where it's more green. So I'll follow all those little lines. So I'm not gonna cut through to the top. I leave about a quarter inch uncut. We'll do all of our slices and then we'll do our dices. Seriously channeling my inner grandma right now, guys. I don't like that piece of onion. It wants to go away anyways. Okay. This piece, just thinly slice it and then we'll dice it after. Cause we're not gonna waste anything. Okay, so we're gonna saute the onion and carrot together. And then we're gonna add our broth back to the pot. While the broth is coming up, we can mix our dumpling mixture together. And then we can add our cabbage, corn, and chicken, like, near the last five-ish minutes of cooking just to heat it through. Cause those things won't take a lot of cooking and they won't need a lot of heat. Am I super bright? Maybe it's just cause I have my hair pulled back today, Matt. And I'm wearing like dark colored clothes. but it's also a pretty gray day outside here. So maybe that's affecting the lighting for me. Onion complete. It's actually quite a bit. I'll give lots of good flavor though. Lots of good sweetness. Santoku knives are your favorite all purpose blade shapes. Me too. Yeah, this knife is great for pretty much everything. Okay, we're gonna cut our carrot in half to start. And I like to stand it on the flat side so it's really easy to cut. It'll be more stable. And then we're gonna do small dice for this as well. The onion is trying to make me cry. I don't think it will succeed though. Okay, we can probably stack a couple of these pieces on each other. And then once again, we'll start with our slices and then we'll go back after and do all of our dices.
What's everyone else been cooking for themselves at home? Since there's not a ton of places open now. Okay, maybe that onion is getting me. Sam and I have been doing it so we cook like one kind of more in-depth meal and then our other meal is like a lot easier and simpler so we're not like creating a ton of dishes and stuff like that to clean up afterwards. You used to work in a salad room. You would time the onions so when the boss came in the morning the walls were crying. <laughs> oh my gosh. You're still cooking beans. Yum. Cookie had Salisbury steak last night. It was really good. Yeah, go like old school comfort food, hey? Okay, I'm just going to quickly blow my nose because it's running from these onions. BRB. Okay, I'm back. All right, carrot time. So I'll just take a little pile like this. Gather it all together. And we do our dices. Oh no. It's true. I guess those gummies we made for our friend yesterday, guys, he came and got them last night after work. I guess he went interplanetary. He held on for dear life. They were good gummies then. They worked. We'll call them Betty Bears. Go, 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 go. This is a good soup for practicing knife skills. It's a good one. Hey, Sam said he was gonna make that for me. Becca, pork chops with mushroom sauce? Heck yes, so good, that's a staple. Yeah, not to be confused with interstellar. Thank you. The throwback meal, love it. Yeah, we had a really good thread on our local Facebook page where someone put a thread of, everyone has to share their favorite like childhood memory of something that you really enjoyed eating. So everyone shared all their recipes. There's like a hundred plus comments now that I'm still sifting through. It's like, those are the real winners. Those recipes that are still around, oh man. Shake and bake pork chops with mushroom pilaf rice. Yum. Your local thread's doing it too. Yeah, everyone's been like so, so creative and taking care of each other. I think we have to be able to like see some good from this. Like, yes, it's not a good thing what's happening, but if we stay positive, I think things will be easier for everyone. All right, I got three big cloves of garlic. I think I'll mince it into there with a garlic press. I'm just gonna smash it first so we can peel it. Yeah, never enough. How are you, Yawn Lions? Good to see you today. Roasted garlic cayenne pepper hummus, yeah. Oh, that's what I forgot to grab, was the chickpeas to make hummus for our Greek day. That's okay. Maybe we'll do like a snack food stream coming up. Like what, what to keep stocked in the fridge for all the good snacks? Okay, there is our garlic. 
that all together. I actually think I have to cut this down just so it fits in the garlic press. Really nice cloves. Garlic was on sale last week, so I got a bunch. What was it, like four, four heads for like two bucks or something? It was crazy. Okay, and I'm actually gonna switch this broth out of this pot, back into grandma's pot. Cause I want to saute the veggies a bit to give us some extra flavor when we caramelize vegetables for our soup, especially the onion and carrot. And if you guys have celery on hand, that would go great in here as well. Mirepoix for soup base, always. Okay, there is that. This is literally just gonna hold the broth in it. Just because I want to do my cooking in the nice pot. The very, very nice pot. Would celery act work? Yeah, that would be really yummy too. Yeah, we need to plant our garlic. I got mine, mine sprouting up right now and then I'll be planting it. Celeriac is so good. Hey, Wilson, how are you? Things are good here. Done work now. Just put in for my EI benefits yesterday and we're good. Oh yeah. I just want fat in there. I don't want any liquid. Switch that again. Okay, we got our chicken for our veggies. Pot is going on to a medium high heat. Ooh, garlic greens or yeah, like garlic sprouts. So good. And then just vzzz. Yeah, very accurate. I love directions like that. <laughs> yeah, fresh bread with hummus. Okay, I am going to put this is our chicken fat that I scraped off of our broth this morning before we heated it up. So just a bit of chicken fat in the bottom of our pot to saute our veggies in. We can put our onion and carrot into this bowl. Then we'll put our cabbage into there afterwards. You have a ham. Roast that ham up. Sounds good, Palsh. Thank you for the lurk, my dude. You go get your sleep. We'll get some rest. We'll be on the rest of the weekend as well. So we'll catch you then. Hey, that can go aside. We can put our corn aside for now as well. Now our cabbage. So I'm just gonna cut a small chunk off of the cabbage. 
the triangle underneath that leaf. Maybe like a third of the cabbage. And I'm gonna cut really nice small pieces of it. So I'm gonna peel a couple layers at a time to cut together. It'd be easier if it's more flat. So I'll leave it like that. And that, and then that. Okay, we got some sizzling happening. Stir that to coat. I'm gonna trim off this bottom piece. And now we're gonna match or like try and match the size of our carrots. Be Sultan with the raid. Welcome in, guys. How was the stream? Okay, so about half inch thick slices. Then we'll get these nice little cubes of cabbage in our soup. Can you guys hear the chicken fat sizzling in the background? <laughs> How is your stream, B. Sultan? Thank you so much for the raid. Hi, Scoos, how are you? I'll do this view instead. Okay, our chicken fat that we scraped off of our broth over here is nice and hot, so we're gonna start sauteing our carrot and onion for the soup base. And we're gonna let that caramelize until it's nice golden brown. Yeah, we're doing good. Hi, Meadow Fox, how are you? Thanks for asking, guys. We are done work for the foreseeable future, so I've added in an extra stream day, which is Thursdays now. And yeah, excited to do lots of cooking with you guys during this time. I'm also gonna be using Tuesdays and Wednesdays on my own time to start creating more YouTube videos as well. So I thought since I don't have to go to my full-time job, I'll work on myself instead. Do some new stuff for stream that I've been wanting to do. And then obviously really excited to plant the garden with you guys as well. It'll be really nice to have time off to focus on that. So I think, I mean, after all of this that's happening, it's pretty important that we know how to grow our own food and be somewhat sustainable just in case the stores do end up closing. Because that would be like really catastrophic. There's no way that local farmers would be able to feed everyone. Let's just say that. Sounds like a good use of time. Thank you. Yeah, it was really weird the first day. I will say that. Like, I didn't know what to do with myself, but it's getting easier now. I'm settling in. I think this is just a time that we should be taking care of ourselves and well, others, if we can. This 
is going to be so good. I always get so excited when I make this soup. I don't know why. All right, so after this, we can mix up our dumpling dough and have that ready to go. And then we just have to chop up some of our fresh herbs. So parsley and dill. See if I can grab maybe some thyme or sage from outside. Those are growing again. And so this is also showing you how to use up some of that bone broth if you have some at home. You don't just need to drink it, you can turn it into a soup or a stew. There's our chick or there's our cabbage. So just our cabbage and corn is left to add and both of those will take less than 10 minutes to reheat. So just keep that in mind for later. Let's give this a little stir. Nice, we're getting some, a little bit of color building up now. I'm just gonna quickly see what kind of herbs I can cut from outside. Hopefully I don't get rained on. Got some sage. No, there's not enough time quite yet. Ain't nobody got time for that. Just some sage. I'll take a couple sprigs. Mama Cedar drinks one. Coming in with that time. She's got a little time for that. Put that fan on. It's starting to smell real good in here already. Oh, hi, Solid. How are you, my dude? Donation from Mama Cedar Drinks Wine. You hanging in there, solid? You working from home? Yeah, I've only worked from home the last three years. <laughs> so this is really nothing, nothing out of the ordinary for you then. You're like, this is what I've been working towards. Yeah, nothing has changed at all. Well, that's great to hear, dude. Mm, this stuff is fresh. 
It smells good. Give this a stir. There we go. Okay, I'm going to turn our pot down now to medium heat. I don't want it to get too dark on the bottom. One thing I have learned cooking with enamel is it can get to the point where it gets too dark and you cannot scrub it off. So let's not do that. A little bit of caramelization though is fine. Just these pots don't like to be cooked on like really, really high heat. So we're gonna mince the garlic into there next. I'm just gonna finish finely chopping this thyme first. And then we'll add the thyme, sage, and garlic all together. Yeah, everyone has actually just adapted to Solid Smith's lifestyle. <laughs> Beautiful, we can combine that. Then into there. Oh, that did not work like how I wanted it to. Hit the stove one and she goes to cutting board. Okay, just gonna mix in the herbs. Now it's gonna get super fragrant when we start adding our garlic. And we're going heavy on the garlic because this is something that's gonna keep you really healthy as well. Just keep mincing. One more. Because we really cannot ever have enough garlic. Boom. All right, stir that in. I'm gonna wash the garlic off my hands because it's so sticky. Flavor and healthy, perfect. Yeah, yes. Oh man. Next thing going in is our broth. Just want a little bit of saute action on this garlic. And then it's dumpling time. Not gonna add all of the broth at once either. I'm gonna add a little bit at a time. Cause we might end up with extra. I'm just gonna taste it as well to see how we have to go for the seasoning going forward. Very, very lightly seasoned. So we'll definitely be adding a good amount of salt to this. Such a good chicken flavor though. Garlic smell is like making me want pasta or something.
Did we make the broth already on stream or was this the broth that we made previously? It was from last weekend. Yeah, this is our chicken bone broth from Nom Nom Paleo that we made last weekend. And then, so we let it go one more day and then we strained it and then we poached a whole chicken in the broth and then we let that sit another day, obviously until today. And then we just heated up the broth to get it off the chicken and pulled the chicken. And that way we got like the most flavor and all of the nutrients. So we're trying to extract all everything from all of our ingredients, right? Since there's basically a shortage of ingredients around the world right now. So we're really just doing the best that we can. Okay, I'm happy with this. Garlic is nice and golden brown. Now let's go in with a bit of broth. Nah, we're gonna use this all. I know we're gonna need it. So now we're gonna wait for this to come up to a simmer. And while we wait, we will make our dumpling mixture. Yeah, no wonder it's chickeny. Exactly. If you're gonna say something has chicken in it, well then you better know that it does. Okay, so we have our freshly milled spelt flour. That was the first thing we did on stream today was use our grain mill and we milled our spelt berries until we got nice fresh flour, so some whole wheat flour going in there, obviously, but we are mixing it with some all-purpose. Hi, Nike. Good to see you, my dude. How are you and waifu holding up? So for our dumplings, we'll need two cups of flour. So I'm gonna do half and half, all-purpose to spelt. So one cup of each, and I'll use this bowl for our dumplings. So I'm just gonna pack up the flour. So I'll get my one cup that I need. And I think it looks like we have about two, two cups worth of spelt flour. Beautiful. It's right on that spelt. Spelt, how do you spell spelt? Oh my gosh, solid. Yeah, you should have taken a picture of your lasagna that you made. Heck yes. Introverts dream right now, Nike? So I have heard. Okay, so we are going to mix all of our dry ingredients, add our shortening. So we'll need a quarter inch slice of shortening. Tender flake is what we'll go with. I love how it just says a quarter inch slice, like very accurate right there. So we'll mix all our dry ingredients, add our shortening, and then add in a cup of our broth, which is gonna have stuff in it, but that's okay. I'll just make the dumplings taste better. Yeah, if you guys are cooking at home, put the pictures of your foods in our Discord food pick section. Nice, Nike. You're in the top 3,500 in the world for magic. 
That's really good, dude. All right, one cup of spelt flour. I'm gonna go grab our one cup of broth. Might just have a couple onion and garlic and herbs in it. Trying to not get a carrot though. Got it. One and one. <laughs> yeah, what's your best trick? <laughs> He's a magician. <laughs> you guys. Okay, a teaspoon of baking powder. So that's going to help our dumplings just puff up a little bit. One teaspoon of baking powder and one teaspoon of salt. gonna use a spatula or a spoon to mix this guys not a whisk it's gonna get pretty thick thick if you will Shortening time. <laughs> Your husband thought we went mushrooms. Magical. <laughs> Tender flake. Pure lard. Dun, na, na, na. I think we have just enough. Oh, actually we have double, double enough. A quarter inch slice of shortening. I'm gonna go like that. smells in here guys okay perfect it's just coming up to a simmer okay so now it says add in our shortening so I'm just gonna like break it up with my hands into almost like pea pea sized pieces do this pretty quickly so it doesn't start to melt in your hands And then we'll start mixing it with the flour and then nothing should stick to our hands. And then we add our liquid, bring it all together. So some people like to go like really thick with their chicken and dumplings, but I like to have 
a nice broth, like a nice clear broth and have my dumplings like not mixing into the broth. So keeping everything separate, not as thick as like a really heavy Southern version. Okay, mix that up. And then I'll probably end up switching to my hands. One cup of broth. Very flavorful. So that's a trick other than adding water, right? And it said that you should always have warm broth as well. You might need a touch more. I'm just gonna add some warm water because I don't wanna keep taking all of the broth from the soup, but it just looks a touch dry. So add some water before it's too late. I like my dumplings a touch looser. Add a little bit more. You can see how this spelt flour like really soaks the liquid up compared to all purpose. Trying to evenly mix in our lard right now. Perfect. So it's like a loose kind of jiggly dough. King Shrewis, how are you? Yeah, can someone kick my butt towards the fridge? Kick it, I need food. Hey, we got a drink? You're keeping me hydrated today? Thanks, King Shrewis. One quick drink of water, and then we're going over to our soup pot. going to add in our corn. Yum. I am going to add in cabbage. Yum. Gonna add in chicken. Time to fill the pot back up. Give that a stir. And now this has to be simmering before we can drop the dumplings in. <laughs> 
Fun fact, when King Shrewis is hungry, I'm always on stream. I'm sorry. <laughs> or yeah, you're just always hungry. Probably that. I feel for you though, because I'm also always hungry. I am always readily available for snacks. Pack up our schmaltz that we got today. Chicken fats. Schmaltz. Just gonna half lid it. Yes, oh man, armored. Some eat to live, the rest of us, yeah. We live to eat. You got it. That's why we're here. I swear, that's, that's my purpose. I've been put here so that we can eat good food. Chicken fat. Done. Okay, dumpling mixture. Put over there as well. And I suppose in the meantime, we'll start dealing with our herbs. So we got some parsley. And some dill. Those will be put in at the end so they stay nice and green. Cooking something and eating something is an art. That's, that's said a lot in our industry. It's like food and ingredients and everything like that. Cooking, it's an art for sure. You definitely need some kind of creativity, I think, to be able to really enjoy it. I'm with you on that. Oh my gosh, Annie, welcome back. Safe and sound. You didn't run out of hand sanitizer. All right, so we will watch our stuff come up on the stove top while we pick our herbs. Yeah, at least you hope that you're safe and sound. Did you, were you successful in finding all of the things that you wanted? Did you get skunked? Did anyone steal milk out of your shopping cart? Ah, oh, they were out of most gluten-free bread. Dang it. There's only the brand you don't like left. Oh my gosh. Of course, right? Getting skunked. Have you ever heard that saying before, Sultan? Or is that like a North American thing? We say, did you get skunked if you like didn't find what you wanted? Oh my gosh, you've not. That's why you're like, what the heck are you guys talking about? Yeah, getting skunked means that you didn't get what you wanted. Okay, there's our parsley. Are we simmering yet? Not yet. We'll give this a stir to help it along its way. So Annie, happy to say that everything is now in the pot except for dumplings. That's all we're waiting on. And then I will also say that we should season the soup before we put the dumplings in. You couldn't find ghee? Well, I guess you just have to make your own then, Annie. 
really, really easy to make at home. Literally just clarified butter. The dumplings get cooked in the soup, yes. You are right. Your mom used to do that? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Sultan. Getting skunked has nothing to do actually with skunks or anything that smells bad. <laughs> He's probably like, what? You got shot by a skunk? <laughs> no, no bad smells here. I believe in you, Annie. Oh, don't be sorry if you're late to the stream. Do the dumplings have a filling? No. So this is an American version of chicken and dumplings where the dumplings are not a filling rather than a batter of sorts that get cooked in the broth. So it's not like a gyoza or anything like that. Is we made this mixture of fresh milled spelt flour there is also broth from the soup, so chicken broth, and then shortening and just baking powder and salt. That's it. And then we scoop it into the broth, cook them for about 10 minutes. Very, very simple and made out of ingredients that most people should have on hand. It's similar to British dumplings. Oh, what are British dumplings? You're very welcome. Yeah, never feel bad or scared to ask questions because that's why I'm here. And that's the only way we learn. The fresh chopped parsley and dill should really lighten up the flavor. Give it more of a spring vibe than like a heavy winter chicken and dumpling. Before we go any further, So big veal. Give this one more stir and then I'm going to taste our broth and start adding some salt. Maybe a little crack of pepper because it looks like we're just about to come up to a simmer. And I want the broth seasoned before we start cooking the dumplings in it. Mmm. Ah, oh, amazing. Welcome in, Skellius. We love our first timers. Okay, my guesstimation. One, two, three. I'm gonna start with four teaspoons of salt. It sounds like a lot, but remember, there's like eight servings in here. So let that dissolve in. We'll give it another taste. one and a half more. And we 
we're just gonna hang out right here. I think this is gonna come up to a simmer in like 10 seconds. And then we don't want this like boiling like crazy because then it can mess our dumplings up where they might fall apart from the agitation of the soup. So just a nice low simmer to cook them. Yeah, Yawn Lions. I know I was looking for lactate in this store as well, like a month ago and I couldn't find it here. So it might have to be an Amazon thing because I think I have a little bit of lactose stuff as well, especially when I overdo it is like the amount of bloating is crazy. Okay, see those little bubbles coming up? That's what we're waiting for. Beautiful. Okay, so I'll let that go crazy. Wow, stream elements, a little behind there. <laughs> Meadow Fox, thank you for the follow. Okay, yeah, what the heck? Is stream elements broken? That was like an hour ago. Okay, we got our dumpling mix. So now all I do is take my scoop, take some of the mixture, scoop it right in. And just keep doing that, because I like my little bite size dumplings. Couple more. And I love how they float right back up to the top. Two more, I'm thinking. One very gentle stir, turning down heat. So all our dumplings are up top now. You can see them all. So now we just have to cook them through. And it said there's bad luck if you lift the lid. Beautiful. So what we're gonna do, put the lid on. And I will do six minutes. Now we wait. Bye, yawn lions. They vanished. This is an interesting recipe. Dust has never had chicken and dumplings with all the veggies in it before. I think this is a Canadian version. It usually seems to me like when <laughs> When the staple American recipes have a lot of vegetables in it, it's like a Canadian version. <laughs> but it, I really love it because it hits like all of your spots. Like, yes, it's kind of heavy, but it's comforting. There's vegetables in there, so it's healthy. Because we took our time to make our own broth, we know it's good for us. That's how you make it, Cook and Grill, is lots of veggies. Yeah, I don't know. I think this is also a recipe that differs between like families and stuff like that is everyone kind of has their own chicken and dumpling 
recipe. I didn't want have one in my family. Like I never had this until a couple years ago when it was shared with me. And well, this is what the Hamel recipe is. And I think it's a smart thing to add in the vegetables because it gives a really nice uh, contrast of texture. Skellius, thank you for the follow. Welcome, our first timer. I think there's gonna be quite a few new people hopping onto Twitch in these next weeks as they are still stuck at home. Just be thankful that we do have the internet, really. That's all I can say. Yeah, welcome Stream Elements. Thank you for waking up. Yeah, Stream Elements slept in today, that's all. <laughs> Annie's got some orange juice. Screwdrivers are on the menu. Nice. Okay, fine chopped parsley. Ready to go. So we can put some of this into the soup and then we can also save some for a garnish on top. Hey. Thank you so much, Annie, for the gifted sub. Again? Welcome in, guys. Cooking girl is not new. She is a food and drink streamer herself, but welcome in Skellius, someone new to the channel. Thank you very much, Annie. Wash off my parsley off my board before it stains into the wood. Too late. And then I suppose we need a bowl to put our soup into. And really, we didn't make much for dishes today either for this recipe. Okay, one minute on the timer. software. Has anyone used Final Cut Pro from Apple for editing? Yeah, Nike also needs a bowl. <laughs> Annie, you have. What do you think? What do you think of it, Annie? You use it all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah, I really like using my MacBook for because it's like portable, so I can like do stuff on the couch besides Sam if I want to do some editing. And we've been wanting to get a editing software for me. That's easy to use. You've produced many videos for several years with the program. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Cause I've been using like iMovie and it's a little bit annoying sometimes. Yeah, is it worth the $400? I guess that's what Sam is asking. <laughs> Okay, we got our ladle. We have our soup spoon. Our timer's going off. Should have our dumplings. 
I'm gonna try and video taking the lid off here. Think a bit longer. Just where some of the dumplings were cooking really close together. Just let them go for like a minute more. And I'm gonna steal this little guy just to make sure it's cooked through. But that's how I like my chicken and dumplings. Oh, that's true. Yeah, at least the it's a one-time fee, whereas Adobe, you'd have to pay every single year. Sweet. Thanks for the help, Annie. Oh, that was so hot. Oh. Mmm. What a flavorful dumpling. Yeah, solid, I guess, could, could lend some opinions here as well. Okay, so just a little sprinkle of our parsley and dill, some into the soup. And I'll just use a little bit for garnish. Totally burnt my mouth just now, by the way, guys. Testing the dumpling. That was rocking hot. So it's gonna add really nice fresh herb flavor. Maybe lighten up the dish a little bit. I love dill with chicken for sure. Now let's come over here. <laughs> yeah, solid. I do things. <laughs> Very hot pot. Boom. I'll center it for you guys so that you can see first. But that. Your grandma still be able to make the dumplings hard. They're pretty soft. Like these are definitely soft where they melt in your mouth. I wonder what she did to make them hard. That's the thing is sometimes grandmas don't reveal their secrets. So it's up to us to figure out what they did. Yeah, not a chance you're gonna get eight servings. <laughs> Okay, I just need to shimmy this a touch. Going back this way.
we have our ladle and our soup bowl. Yeah, soup is liquid, it doesn't count. <laughs> he already ate 10 plates of Indian food. So not, oh, that's true. That makes total sense, Armored, a dir. Not putting any leavener in will keep the dumplings more dense and heavy. That makes sense. Yeah, this is molten right now. Give it a little stir, because all the chicken is in the bottom right now. And then I always try and get like a couple different colored vegetables in there. That's what I usually go for. So you like yellow, orange, and green. And then as far as like the amount of dumplings, I usually go four or five if they're this size. I really like this little guy here. Five is always gonna look better. Let's just say that. Beauty! <laughs> you guys, yeah, I, I want this, Kate. I'm ready. Yum. this trivet on here a bit better there we go one more photo friends and then we get to taste it smutty nose ipa thank you for the follow welcome in this is another one of those one pot wonders for sure Beautiful. MAA2469, thank you for the follow as well. Yeah, dumplings is a multi day meal, and I think it's gonna like keep evolving in flavor. I could see like making it spicy one day near the end would be so good. So good. Okay. Start cooling some of this off so you can taste it with you guys without burning our face off. Thank you, M.A. Welcome, guys. Okay, first bite, there's just a little piece of dumpling. Oh, fried dumplings? What, Annie? Mmm. It totally tastes like grandma made it. I'm actually so proud of myself right now. I got like all of those grandma feels. But the chicken flavor is like first and foremost. So, key is to make a chicken bone broth and then we make our soup afterwards. What is in here? Great question. So we started by poaching a whole chicken in bone broth. That was our first step. Then we let that sit. Then we pulled the chicken meat off of the bones. We saved those. And then we, for our aromatics, we have onion, carrot, corn, cabbage, garlic, dill, parsley, and then in our dumplings, we have spelt flour, all-purpose flour, tender flake shortening, more broth, salt, and baking powder. And that's it. And that's the soup, guys. It is super simple. 
I did link a recipe that was close to the one I used. So this one's called Grandma's Chicken and Dumpling Soup. Pretty accurate. And then if you want the recipe that I used today, it is just posted in our Discord channel. So go into the recipe section and you'll see a little PDF link to use. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit more dumpling here. I'm hoping that Sam is gonna at least gonna have a bite for you guys as well. Oh, we are on the food channel. We do our own version. So yeah, this is a lot different than Food Network, like on cable TV, because this is all interactive. And that's why I wanted to start doing this so that I can teach you guys how to make wonderful food for yourselves at home. And it doesn't cost a lot. And yeah, sometimes things don't work out. That's just the reality of a live stream is then we get to learn together how to fix it. This is on dog for all you new peeps. He's one of our moderators. He also does lots of my technical or technological stuff on the stream. Yeah, there's the woolly booger. Oh uh, yeah, I'm the Canadian Julia child. Thanks Annie. Yeah, and soon to be editor. It's the Beardsman. He steamed it up. I love that we went heavy on the garlic because that's actually coming through big time. And the dumplings are just like melting in your mouth. A little bit of nuttiness from the spelt. It tastes like chicken. It is chickeny. <laughs> yeah, Sam portion, <laughs> Kate portion. Hot sauce for sure would be good. I'm not gonna go with hot sauce today, but maybe another day. I think I'll switch it up. Oh, hot sauce and dumplings, yum. Everyone should know how to cook, for sure. The herbs, yes. I mean, the herbs make it taste better too. It really freshens it up. This is a great place to learn. Mm. The chicken is so tender. Torino, what's up, my dude? Woo. Yeah, when your wife can cook, but you're a better cook, so then she just lets you cook. See, she's smart. <laughs> what? Who does that? <laughs> Who did that? Solid, you wish you could grow a beard. But your facial hair is blonde as F. Currently rocking a stash though. Yeah, if by 31 years old your beard hasn't changed, it never will. <laughs> I mean, the key is to keep shaving it and like building up your base layer. Dill, it really puts lead in your pencil. <laughs> oh man, this is what's happening, hey guys? <laughs> Yeah, everyone should know how to cook, swim, and drive a stick. The last one, not so much anymore. Happy to say, Armored, that my dad made me drive standard. That's how I learned that was my first car. He said he's not getting anything else otherwise. So yes. There are far and few between those of us that know how to drive standard. Yeah, some people, like Solid Smith, learn in a dream. Now, whether you put that towards real life, I mean, that's up to you. <laughs> Strange story. No, but you actually did learn and now you're using it? 
Yeah, I know, Annie. I literally just got my notification on my phone. It's like, just so you know, Kate, you have a haircut tomorrow. It's like, <laughs> just so I know, Kate, I don't have a haircut tomorrow because it's closed. You don't have a haircut. No. No haircut. What are we going to do? Here we go. Ah! <laughs> Kill me. Oh man. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> no! <laughs> Don't cut Kate's hair. Yeah. <laughs> These days, having a standard car is considered a theft deterrent. The person like breaks into the car. It's oh, like, man. I don't know how to frickin' drive this. <laughs> Did you have a dumpling yet, Sammy? This reminds me you of when you were post-doc. You went out drinking with one of the grads. She drove. Yeah, this is a good bowl. Well, she was too drunk to drive home and you couldn't drive stick. So you drove the car and operated the clutch. She took care of the gear shifting. Boom! Teamwork. Did we do that before too? What did we do before? I don't know what we did shenanigans it's so good becca bugs oh, i'm yeah, loving it a jody hamill recipe so good Like, I'm not a person for soggy foods. So when I first saw this recipe, it was like, the dumplings were weird to me. Because I knew they would be soggy, but it's seriously so good. All of the flavors really just complement each other. And one thing I've also never done before is like switch up the the culture of this dish. Like I've never made an Asian version of this. I've never made a Mexican version, but you could by just switching a few of the aromatics. Skellius, yep, they are eating and I am comfortable. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Yeah, they'd both be good. Asian, Mexican, what else? I don't know, South American, why not? Moroccan chicken is so versatile, right? That it'll really take on whatever flavor you want to put with it. Okay, I'm searching a pork version. Oh, pork and dumplings. Has anyone ever done a different version with meats? Ribs. Are you listening to this? Just saying put ribs in it. Ribs and dumpling soup. Now we are thinking. We are always thinking. That's where you start. Dear, this is what you do with your smelly stick. Welcome to Thailand. No, but that's actually it. Okay, German. Let me, I have a question guys, while we're all still together. Like, it seems that the food and drink streamers in Europe are massive. Like, how do they get these like 3,000 viewers or 1,000 viewers? Like, why is it so much more popular over there than in North America? It's nuts. 
I guess just because of the language or the time slot. Yeah, the smell stick, Sultan, you saw that one. So I have those smell sticks from Thailand and I gave them to Sam. I was like, see Sam, that's how you do it. Is people just walk around with those up their nose. It's pretty smelly some places in Thailand. It's like, oh, I don't want to smell poop. In the evening, there's way more competition for streams. For North America, though, I would say. Like, all of us North American streamers always are on the same time. But, like, German, huge. If anyone has any recommendations of people to raid as well, I'll sure. take that. No, I was... Oh, do we want to do TIG? Okay, mm. I already know who I'm or raiding. I already know who we're going to raid. Someone that we have met in person. So awesome. A streamer. We traveled down to Portland. We met her and her partner. They picked us up at our hotel and they took us out for a full day in Portland. Oh, you missed the question, Armored? I was just asking. I notice all the time that the European streamers that don't speak English have a lot of viewers when they do cooking streams. Just wanted to know why. They're also speaking their language. Mm hmm Maybe a switch to their prime zone time and then they hit it with a North American menu. Boom, yeah. Hey, then they get the boast of both or the best of both worlds. You guys too, have a wonderful day. I'll get this raid going since Sammy's clean plate club. Tig, girl, TK. Okay, so Tig streams food and drink. She is a part of Slow Food there in Portland. And all around, just very knowledgeable person with food and cooking. Amazing people. We had such a fun time. Uh, so she's doing some fun stuff from home right now. Thank you guys for everything today. Welcome in all of our new peeps. And we will be on tomorrow and the next day. So see you then tomorrow. Thank you. I will take that as a that compliment. Was fantastic. So tomorrow, Black Ooh. Forest Cake Day. National Black Forest Cake Day. So that's what we're doing on stream. Our favorite cake. And some other things. Okay, see you guys soon. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe and Bye. clean.